We're going to have a look at a noise X mix, aren't we, that uh, did re recently, and have a look at what we've been using the um, the Sonic stuff for. Um, primarily the suppressor, I think, because that's like me favorite plugin of all time so I think we should and I use it all the time so we should probably look at um, what I'm doing with it it's it can be quite unconventional at times one of the things I'd say about um, the suppressor is that when I first got it I started using it in a DSing role um, which is great and it works fine but I don't think I actually realized initially the power of it until you start using it a bit differently and, and trying different things with it so <clears throat> Let me just play you a little snippet of the chorus first thing. Okay, so that's that's the vibe of the track. There's quite a lot going on, isn't there? There's a lot, lot to fit in. Um, and that's where the, the suppressor comes in really, really helpful, just creating space for things. Um, so let's just start with the kick. Um, so I've got um, I've got the suppressor on here, and you'll see that it's I've got um, it's a low mid thing really. It's just tucking in a bit of that wooliness. Um, just where it needs to. And you'll see it's more, um, it's not necessarily on the attack of the kick that it's EQing, it's just the wooliness after it. Um, so it's not like an EQ that's taking away the power of the initial hit attack of it. So it's just it's just reducing those frequencies when, when I need it to do it, which is, which is brilliant. And uh, you'll see that I'm using the suppressor in those low mid frequencies quite a lot in terms of just tucking in things that don't need to be there when they happen rather than EQing across the board and then you lose a bit of warmth. Classic example of that is the bass in the chorus. Um, so you've got, um, it's a slightly higher frequency here but you'll see like 250, between 250, 350. It's just tucking in certain notes, certain notes in the chords really when, when they happen and they sound a bit woolly. It's just, it's just controlling them. So you get a lot more of an even sound across that, that part. Um, you couldn't do that with an EQ, you know, you'd struggle. Um, what you'd end up doing is taking out those frequencies and then where it doesn't need to be taken out, you, you know, you, you, you're limiting what, what you're doing. Um, and then let's have a look, we've got a similar thing going on with the piano here as well. Um, similar sorts of frequencies again. Um, with this, it's like, obviously you can see certain chords, it's, drag it's dragging those frequencies down more. But notice the way that it's at the start of the chord, it's dragging down more. Um, so it actually means that it's not thinning out the ends of the chords where it doesn't need to, do you know what I mean? So it just stays nice and warm all the time until something's a problem and then it just it just gets rid of the, those elements. Um, let's have a look at the vocal, right? Um, Similar sort of thing, really. It's just I notice this with vocals a lot. Um, it's only certain syllables or certain lines where you get a bit of wooliness, and then it's um, and then some other syllables it's fine, you know. So what I used to do before I had the suppressor is you'd end up going through and doing offline EQs like in the audio suite to try and trim the bits that are woolly and stuff and it's a nightmare you know it just takes forever um, and this is just a, a you know you just throw this plug in and set it up and off you go um, what I do when I drag these up first is I'll go straight into the listening mode um, so I'll listen to it bypass um, and then I'll, I'll be listening for what I don't like about it and then if it goes straight into the listening mode um, I can start. And the bit I want to lose is somewhere around here. So then I can go straight back out the listening mode. 
and it's doing its job straight away. So it's like, you know, 30 seconds maximum really and you've just zoned in on exactly what you want to get rid of. It's great. I've got one across the mix bus as well here. Yeah. Um, so it's between four, 450 and 550 hertz. Um, and it's just doing, I usually don't put this on the mix bus until a bit later on. Just it's almost like a finishing touch and it just, it's almost like what you'd see a lot of mastering guys doing and just, just creating definition by just getting rid of a little bit of that wooliness out of the mix. And this is doing it before it goes to mastering really because I don't want an EQ across that, those frequencies all the time. Um, it's just elements jumping in and out there that, that you don't want and it's just doing it in real time when it needs to. So it's really unintrusive, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it just sounds great basically when you've done you know, those little finishing touches and you see like there's not really like a massive amount of gain reduction across all those different elements but it's accumulative like all those all those woolly elements they're the things that are just always going to fight for your space and that um, so it's just I tend to use it on a lot of things but just really gently so it's like the overall picture has just got a real great definition to it I tend to, I do use the suppressor as well, um, a lot more on percussion this would be, but uh, I'm not sure I've got an instance of it in this particular track. But it's things like, you know, when someone's just on kicks and their hat drumming away, um, it might be fine and then they'll go and hit a cymbal and it's like, ooh, a bit harsh. So they're the moments when this is brilliant, the suppressor as well, you can just get it to just do its job when someone hits the cymbal and then you've got the full range again back when he's back on his kit and same with like hats and things like that anything too harsh um it's genius really it's great um and as i said it's one of them things that you've got once you start using it in that way I i'd struggle to mix without it like you know which is um it's just great to be able to have tools like that available nowadays it's one of them things where a lot of a lot of plugins you can that are emulating analog gear, we can still get those sounds with the analog gear. Whereas these type of plugins are very, very much like there's no other way of doing it outside the box, you know. So they're crucial, crucial tools really in the, you know, in what we're doing nowadays.